Hi, my name is John Galloway. I work at Microsoft and we're going to be starting on a tutorial looking at the MVC Music Store. MVC Music Store is a tutorial plus a sample application. It's built using ASP.NET MVC2 and both the source code and an 80 page PDF tutorial are available for download from mvcmusicstore.codeplex.com. This tutorial is designed at the beginner level. We're focusing on how the MVC framework works by building a working application, but we're keeping it as simple as possible. We're going to be doing our best to write clean code, but we're not going to be digging into more advanced practices like dependency injection just yet. I really recommend that after you understand how MVC works, you look into some of our further information on developing professional applications using ASP.NET MVC, using sustainable development practices. One place where you can find some of that information is at ASP.NET slash MVC application dash development. At the end of this series, we'll list some of the places you can go to learn more. So let's start at the beginning with an overview. Surprisingly enough, the ASP.NET MVC Music Store is a store where you can pretend to buy music. So here we can browse through different genres. We can take a look at maybe some Latin music. I can start loading up my cart. I can maybe buy some pop music uh, or some classical. Get some Pachelbel in there. Rock in the Pock. Okay, and um, maybe I want to drop that classical right now. It's a little too expensive. I'm going to go check out. Here I can fill in all my shopping information. I happen to know there is a promo code that lets me get anything I want for free, which is just great. And now I've placed an order. And then I can go back in and buy some more because heck, it's free. I've also got an admin system where I can create new albums. And if I put in something wrong, I'll get some Ajax validation. I can delete, edit, etc. The code's designed to be as simple as possible, so you can focus on learning the concepts. We're using ASP.NET master pages for the site look and feel, and we're using a clean design that optimizes for CSS. Our database access is done using Entity Framework 4, and we're running against SQL Server Express, which is free and easy to set up. First of all, we'll need to start by getting the tools. If you don't have Visual Studio 2010, you can use the free Visual Studio 2010 Express Edition. You can get that from Microsoft.com slash web. You can do the install using the Microsoft Web Platform Installer. The Web Platform Installer makes it really easy to get everything installed on your machine. You'll see here it lists out all the dependencies, the things that I don't have installed. So that makes it really easy to get the minimum download, but yet make sure everything's going to work. There are two different authentication modes for our database. We're using SQL Server Express, which is free. We can use Windows Integrated Authentication, which doesn't require a password, or we can use Mixed Mode Authentication, which will use a password. For our application, we are going to be using Windows Integrated Authentication, so you would be fine with using that. However, if you're going to be using this for other scenarios, you can fill in your password here and click Next. Now at this point, I just watched the progress bars fly by. We're all done. So this shows that we've installed everything. It's all happened in the correct order, gotten the right service packs and all that. And we're ready to start building. ASP.NET MVC was a separate install for Visual Studio 2008, but it's included in the box with Visual Studio 2010. I'm going to say New Project and click on Web. And I have two options here in my languages. I've got Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp. I'm going to be working in Visual C Sharp. In the MVC area, I have two different types. I've got an MVC2 web application, which is what you'll use most of the time. For this project, we'll use ASP.NET MVC2 empty web application. 
The difference is that the standard MVC2 template includes some things like a header, login, membership, that sort of thing. We're going to be building some of those things up, but in order to make sure we understand all the concepts, we'll build them from the empty template so we add things in step by step. So after I've selected my project type, I'm going to type in MVC Music Store for my application name and click OK. So now that we've created an empty project, we can see it's not completely empty. There are actually some folders here, and that's because ASP.NET MVC follows some conventions. So let's look top to bottom. We've got a content folder. Content folders where you're going to put static content, so that means things like images, CSS, any other static files. Your controller directory holds controller classes, and those will respond to input from the browser. They'll include the logic that will direct what's going to happen next, and they're responsible for then presenting something to the user. The models directory holds classes which hold and manipulate data. Your scripts directory holds JavaScript. So you can see that ASP.NET MVC2 comes with jQuery 1.41, and it also includes Microsoft Ajax, some other validation scripts. We'll be looking at those more later. Finally, your views folder holds user interface templates. So these describe the visual representation that we're going to be sending to the user. We'll be talking about all of these in a lot more detail through the course of this tutorial. So that wraps up part one. In this part we've talked about what we're going to be building and we've installed Visual Studio Express and created a new empty project. In the next step, we'll be creating some controllers and starting to put some content out on the screen. Thanks a lot for your time.